Black Tent is an anime that kind of surprised me. When I saw it advertised, I didn't know what to think, other than the main character looks adorable, the other characters look fun, and the fact that I'd never really heard of rhythm gymnastics before. It made me curious, so I thought, let's give it a watch, because I like to give the what I would admittedly call the probably not going to be popular animes a chance, and the same thing happened with Skate, until that pretty much blew up in popularity, which I'm really glad about. But what I wasn't expecting was the beautiful animation quality, interesting characters, great soundtrack, and a story that, where I wouldn't call it the most gripping ever, there was still enough to keep me watching. This video is spoiler free, however where I will talk about some plot points, I will provide a warning when I talk about anything that would be a spoiler, with a timestamp that you can skip to. So just be warned about that. But apart from that, it is spoiler free. Now I need to point out that this review was originally a part of two longer videos where I did a react respond review on this series, and unfortunately that series didn't really work out, so I decided to take the review section and make this video so there's a more general review and with my new format for reviewing anime. Now not much has changed, but since those videos aren't public now, obviously this will be new to you. And where there are some additions to the script and video, instead of re-recording the entire video, I've decided to leave the rest intact and just record these additions. Now I also need to quickly explain that in this review series, I rate the following categories out of 10, and then present a final overall score. So those are art slash animation, characters, music, story slash plot, and then finally the overall slash average. So with that out of the way, Let's continue. After watching Back 10, the one thing I noticed is that it tried to keep you engaged with the characters more than a story, because at times I found that it was kind of slow. Where yes, obviously we have the main character Shotro being new to the sport and having to learn it, we only really saw two big performances and even the matches against the other high school, those weren't seen that often. Now I know doing this is often frowned upon when talking about sports animes, but honestly it's because it's a well known sports anime, so it's good to compare. And that's Haikyuu. Within 12 episodes there were at least 3 to 4 matches, maybe more, even if some were practice matches. Now I tried to research this but I didn't really want to go through 12 episodes of Haikyuu to find out. But the point I'm trying to make is, it's not an episode limitation. And with episode 5, they just spent that playing hide and seek. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it as it was a bit of fun, with a nice break so the characters could get to know each other. But really, within these 12 episodes, I don't know if I'd say a lot really happened in terms of rhythm gymnastics, or more so competitions. Just a lot of backstories and the characters saying how they need to get better, with the occasional scene showing them practice. And again, with Shotaro needing to learn, the first few episodes were spent doing that, which is fair, but as I mentioned, the amount of time you actually saw them doing rhythm gymnastics against someone wasn't very often. So I feel as though the characters' personalities were really the only thing that kept this anime going. And of course, we saw them grow and improve, but not enough by doing competitions. As I said, most of the episodes were just filled with random drama, the characters going through some emotional trauma, which is fine, it makes it more realistic, but I, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing I just wanted to see more competitions or practice matches. But anyway, I think I've made my point. So for story and plot, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10, simply because where it wasn't confusing at all, in terms of progression, it was really slow and episode 12 basically left us on a cliffhanger. Incoming spoiler, skip to the time on your screen now. Great, they got second place and they're moving on, but Shotro still has that injury and just said, I can't wait to saw with you guys, and that's it. Except that's how I would end it. But after I decided to research this anime while writing this part of the script, it's been found that, apparently, a movie has been announced, which looks to continue this story, so I'll more than likely do a follow-up video on that movie whenever or if it comes out.
But for now, I'll still leave it at 6.5 out of 10, and hopefully that will increase when the movie comes out. Art slash animation. Throughout every episode, this anime looks stunning. Now, I got confused as I thought A1 made the animation, or Note Amina did. However, it was produced by a company who I wasn't all too familiar with, Zex. Or however you're supposed to say that. They were apparently founded in 1998, but they don't seem to have a huge list of productions under their belt, which is fine, but Back 10 so far seems to be their latest one. Regardless though, they really outdid themselves with this one. This anime comes with just beautiful visuals, lighting, shading, colours, animation, just everything. Now, I do feel as though the quality magically took a shift on episode 11, compared to the rest, so I'm not sure if it was given more budget or more time, but where obviously it was beautiful all around, episode 11 and 12 seemed much more improved. So I'm going to give art slash animation a 10 out of 10. Music. The soundtrack is made by Yuki Hayashi, the same guy known for My Hero Academia and Haikyuu. After finding that out and listening to the soundtrack on Spotify, not sponsored or anything, but a link is in the description if you want to give the soundtrack a listen, I highly recommend it. I found the soundtrack just captured the pure emotion in this anime and it really added to it. As for the opening and ending, I have to admit that, sorry for this, but the opening really reminded me of a Haikyuu opening. I'm sorry, I don't mean to keep comparing it, but it's really the only sports anime I can think of to compare it to at the minute. But regardless, I would say it's still a powerful opening, with the ending being the typical anime ending with a slow piano-based song, but still really nice. For music, it also gets a 10 out of 10. I think all the music just adds so much more to this show and makes it just that more special. And the last main category, characters. He's so cute! Where's my list of characters I want to adopt? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Shotaro is incredibly precious and lovable, with a huge passion for the sport. And of course, he's just really innocent. Must protect. As for the rest of the characters, I absolutely love them all. I... Uh, hold on. Where's that list? Okay, so... Yes, they're very adorable and lovable, and all have such unique personalities. They can be cheeky sometimes as well. Watari is probably my favourite character. At the start, I thought he was going to be one of those moody slash angry personalities, and where he does get angry at things, I personally think that's what makes him kind of adorable. Let me show you this scene to prove it. Now, all of them have these kinds of unique personalities. Shotaro is the passionate, innocent one. Misato is the quiet, definitely introverted one. Watari, we just mentioned. Um, this one, whose name I won't even attempt to pronounce, is the captain. So you can already imagine that, yes, he's the leader type. Again, another name that I won't try to pronounce is the calm and collected one with the level head. And finally, Onagawa is one of those characters who often thinks about impressing the girls, but has that love for a girl group. So yeah, he's just that type of character. Now, you have the other characters, but we'd be here all day. Of course, these personalities is what makes them all so lovable. However, I'm actually going to point out a slight problem, and it's what I talked about with the story section. Where yes, I do love these characters. I mean, look at them, they're so precious. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I mean, okay, look, this is how I review animes. Now you know. Anyway. Where I do appreciate them doing this, I did find that they all went through too much and didn't allow the story to progress. Incoming spoiler, skip to the time on your screen now. It's like how in episode 7 they basically spent all that episode telling us a backstory on the coach, and with episode 8, 
Onagawa faked an injury to work things out. So there's two episodes that honestly felt a bit slow. Now hold your horses, as I said I appreciate this as it makes them more relatable, as these are the kinds of things we all go through, fair enough, but honestly I think I was just feeling sorry for them most of the time, whereas I would rather them have the occasional, oh I'm not feeling right, similar to what happened to Masato in episode 9. That was actually a really good episode because not only were they trying to do a move related to the sport, but it showed that, hey, this character can't do this move because of a past experience. Brilliant. Not, oh, you're the ace, I'm not, so I'm going to fake an injury because I'm unsure of a lot of things. Sorry, I've kind of rambled on about something I really didn't need to, but for characters, you'll be surprised to hear 8 out of 10. Where yes, I do love them all, I just think they, or rather, their stories could have been written better, or compressed into a single episode, rather than spacing it out how they did. Well, that's all the categories. So, what's the average score? Well, the actual average is 8.625, which, okay, so I'm actually going to say 8 out of 10 rather than round up. Now you may be asking yourself, wait, what, 8 out of 10, even though you just complained about a lot of things? Well, despite what I said, Back 10 was still an enjoyable anime. The animation and art was stunning, with a very likeable cast of characters and a great soundtrack. But yes, I would still say the plot is lacking in some areas, and I wish they had more practice matches, because there wasn't really any sense of anxiety or tension that you might get from watching other sports animes. So where this anime seems more chill, if you're looking for an anime with a good plot or an exciting sports match, Back 10 is not really going to be an anime for you. But if you just want a nice slice of life anime with fun characters, beautiful animation and a sports element, then yes, Back 10 is for you. As for me, I personally enjoyed the ride, and where I'm definitely looking forward to the movie in the hope that it closes things off nicely, I think it was something I'll just say was nice to watch, but not something I'd really go crazy over. I just felt happy watching it. Thanks for watching. Please leave your feedback down below as there's always room for improvement. And if you watch this anime, let me know your thoughts as I'd love to know what you thought of it. Before you subscribe, please feel free to check out the rest of my channel first as I don't just make this type of video. Thank you once again, and I hope to speak to you in my next video. Goodbye for now.